evening, Jamestown. I'm Matthew Neese with your April 12, 2011 JCTV News Update. Japanese officials raised the level of their nuclear crisis today to levels only previously recorded in 1986 at Chernobyl. The International Atomic Energy Agency has a scale rating the severity of nuclear exposure with 7 being the highest level on the scale. The Fukushima Daiichi power plant used to be at level 5, now it's at level 7, right on par with the Chernobyl disaster 25 years ago. Officials say the situation at the plant is now a major accident with wide consequences impacting the air, vegetables, tap water, and the ocean. However, officials do, no do note that no nuclear reactor explosions, like those at Chernobyl, have occurred at the Fukushima Daiichi plant as of yet, and that leaking from the Japanese plant is around 10% of the Chernobyl accident. Yet the total amount of radioactive material released from the Daiichi plant is still being calculated. There are still almost 150,000 people living in shelters throughout Japan as a result of the earthquakes and tsunami that have led to the Daiichi disaster, and almost a quarter of a million people are still without electricity. Well, we may not have a nuclear disaster here in North Dakota, but flooding is on the minds of many people throughout our states, including Governor Jack Dalrymple. Today, Governor Dalrymple met with Federal Emergency Management Agency representatives and city and county leaders in the Grand Forks area to talk about flooding and efforts to battle it. Meanwhile, authorities are keeping a close eye on two North Dakota dams. In Burlington, officials are bolstering the Horseshoe Dam on the Delax River after discovering the dam had holes. And the Clawson Springs Dam near the small town of Catherine, North Dakota, is reportedly holding up well despite high, high water in the reservoir. Well, we've certainly had some beautiful weather lately. Tonight we should, we can expect some clouds to roll in with temperatures dipping below freezing and winds of around 10 miles per hour. Our extended five day forecast shows us that tomorrow should be mostly sunny with a high of almost 50 degrees with winds around 10 miles per hour throughout the day. But winds will pick up a little on Thursday with gusts over 20 miles per hour. Thursday's high will be in the mid 40s. Friday should be partly sunny with a high near 40. But this weekend we have a slight chance of snow and rain showers on Saturday with highs on Saturday and Sunday in the mid 40s and lows in the high 20s. Yes, spring is here, but it looks as though winter wants to hold on just a little longer. In sports, last night the Jimmy softball team had a doubleheader here at home against Mabel State University. The Jimmies went into extra innings in their first game, but thanks to the great effort by Steph Bolt, who pitched all eight innings for the Jimmies, James Sun was able to pull out the victory by a final score of 3-2. to two. In their second game, the Jimmies also had a wonderful pitching performance from reliever Jessica Lees and won the game 9-5. The Jimmy baseball team had two strong performances yesterday for their home opening games against the Beavers of Minot State University. Alex Kreis pitched seven shutout innings for the Jimmies in the first game of the doubleheader as the Jimmies won 7-0. Jamestown also won the second game by scoring two runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. The final score of the game was Jimmies 3, Beavers 2. The Jimmy men's and women's golf teams were in the Black Hills of South Dakota yesterday and Sunday competing in the South Dakota Mines Invite. The women finished third and the men finished second overall. Well, today's history headline, courtesy history.com, is the beginning of the American Civil War. On April 12, 1861, 150 years ago today, Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard opened fire on the Union-held Fort Sumter in Charleston Bay. The next day, U.S. Major Robert Anderson would surrender the fort. Later, President Abraham Lincoln would call for 75,000 volunteer soldiers to quell the Southern insurrection. Little did anyone know that the bloody conflict would last four long years until June of 1865. But that was a different headline from a different day. For tomorrow's headlines, tune into JCTV, where we always strive to connect the campus with the community. I hope you have a wonderful and great evening. In Jamestown, I'm Matthew Neese.